Good morning, this is Cecil and Blues. Thank you for joining me today for this Final Fantasy XIV video. Just a short one on the contents of patch 3.55b that went live today. On a Thursday, which is a little bit weird, uh, and earlier than expected, honestly, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to celebrate either, because there's really not a ton of content here. It is a revamp of the Diadem, which is content that... I've been ignoring this entire expansion, and barely understand the value of. This does, though, give me an opportunity to touch on the extra features of patch 3.55a that went live a little bit later last week and missed out on my original video. Those uh, features are Little Ladies Day and the Custom Deliveries System, both smaller systems that I didn't feel like making an individual video about. So let's start with Little Ladies Day. It is a short holiday event with no repeatable content. You can knock it out in 15 to 30 minutes and collect all rewards. Those rewards include a cute J-pop idol themed glamour. Uh, there is both a male and a female version of that outfit. And there is a poster for your home or apartment, depending on which you have. Uh, then let's move on to the custom delivery system. This went live last week on Thursday, and now that I have two sets of deliveries under my belt, I feel like I can understand the value of it and kind of where it's going. Um, so uh, it, no matter uh, what value of collectible you provide, you will get the same reputation. So you can't speed that up by ex getting excessively high collectibles. Uh, it looks like three turn-ins move you from rank one to rank two, the uh, six turn-ins will move you from rank two to rank three, and then nine turn-ins will move you to rank four. I'm assuming it's going to continue to grow from there, um, and I'm not, it looks like there's five ranks, uh, there may be six, uh, but, uh, so the, uh, it's a great alternate source of red crafting scripts, uh, you can get red gathering scripts, but since those are basically free, just kind of time-consuming, I feel like crafting is the way to focus, um, because you can buy the crafting materials for these turn-ins just from a vendor, very cheap, you never have to leave Idleshire, it takes very little time to do it, um, you cannot currently cap out your weekly red scripts uh, through custom deliveries, uh, certainly not at the lower reputation levels where you're earning 30 per turn-in, um, at rank 1, 35 per turn in at rank 2, and 40 for turn in at rank 4. I believe it'll probably cap out at 50, which still, with 6 turn ins, does not cover your entire weekly process uh, for red crafting scripts, but also, and I can't say this with any authority, I don't know what you'd be spending your red crafting scripts on these days anyway. Um, it's probably just a method of catching up, getting some reasonable gear uh, as we approach the expansion. Uh, maybe it doesn't matter that you're not getting that uh, full 450 a week, um, but if you want, at least it's cutting down the effort that you have to put in to m cover that gap. Uh, anyway, it's a fine system with minimal time investment, as I mentioned. Uh, you meet an NPC who's got some humorous dialogue about eating weeks-old pudding. Uh, if uh, you do not have a level crafting job, as I mentioned earlier, you will have to fish or gather items for turn-in. Um, it requires that you leave town, but it doesn't have any time windows like the normal gathering collectibles do. Uh, now, with those two features out of the way, let's move on to today's patch notes, which entirely focuses on the exploratory missions. They're back, the diadem is once again available, and if you are very, very lucky, you can win item level uh, 265 gear uh, or item level 280 weapons. Yes, 280 weapons. That is the highest item level weapon that exists in Heaven's Ward. Um, and it's a totally random drop uh, for uh, any class. Doesn't matter what class you're currently playing, you could just get any weapon, and I believe they're completely untradeable, and oh, it's just a mess. Anyway, uh, the big changes are that there are two different queues, one for battle classes and one for gathering classes. This is supposed to prevent the problem where uh, players were having where they'd like, go there for different reasons and then their objectives we would be conflicting. Uh, but once you've completed your primary objectives, which is the only the very beginning of, of the mission, uh, you, you want to complete these primary objectives as fast as possible so that you can move on uh, to the more valuable uh, content 
afterwards. And once you've completed that, everything unlocks and everyone's kind of free to do whatever they want, which seem to create the exact same problems as before, as members of your party start bailing, um, or switching classes, and, and just wandering off on their own, making it hard uh, to get tags and proper contribution uh, credit in the fates, which leads to reduced rewards for the back half of the duty for everyone who is trying to do what they're there to do. Um, all nine parties are hunting rare mobs and boss fates, trying to get treasure chests, etc., etc. As I understand it, the emergency mission is kind of the ultimate goal, um, and it's a, it's a rather challenging encounter if everyone doesn't work together, and it is the source of the 280 weapons. I, I have limited interest in this content. I checked it out. I don't know that I'll check it out a lot. Um, it, it, even twice, three times, I'd probably get completely bored of it. It's just a complete clusterfuck of headless chickens running around with poor communication. It will be the place to hang for the moment, though, because it is the only source of this 280 weapon, uh, and and that's a cheap trick to attempt to make something relevant. Uh, if you are interested in this content, you want to check it out, you can stop by the, air uh, the airship landing in Ishgard um, and uh, talk to the NPCs there, pick up a ticket, and then cash it into queue. Um, the free companies, if you are a member of a free company, you can organize... Uh, a full alliance out of your workshop. If you're going from the airship landing, you can have a party of up to eight people, so one full party of the alliance. Um, but if you are going from your workshop, you can do 24 members, a full alliance. Each instance of the diadem has nine full parties in it. Now, I want to be clear, it is specifically nine full parties, not three alliances. So, uh, there'll be 72 players, assuming no one bails early, running around. Uh, when you get to the later parts of this and everyone's kind of, like, gathered up, it makes getting tags and credit for fates difficult because there's so many people doing damage that things die real fast. Um, and you'll notice... Uh, if you're clustering up all together, um, that uh, it it kind of leads to reduced rewards for everyone. I assume the best strategy is actually to have each individual alliance spreading out, doing their own thing, and uh, then coming together for the big events. But the communication just really isn't there. It's, it's too many people. Uh, anyway, uh, let me know what you think of this one, because to me, uh, really, the diadem is, is very meh. Um, in fact, all of 355 has been a bit underwhelming. Uh, we're just kind of running out the clock as we approach the next expansion, and, and we've got stuff coming, exciting news probably. I know there were articles last week and stuff um, that uh, that tells us things about Heaven Sword. Still, it's all very murky, very nondescript. Um, I'm looking forward to the specifics. Um, I wish you the best of luck in acquiring a 280 weapon if you are going to hunt that down. I am probably going to continue to just kind of do my weekly uh, dungeons and stuff uh, and, uh, and, and keep checking that clock and ask, is it June yet? Uh, thank you for stopping by. I hope you do have a great day. And again, I, I wish you the best of luck if you're hunting down those weapons.